Hey, what's up? I'm Guy. I'm John. This is our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. Give this video a like. We Check out our it. podcast below in the description. I got bad news for Robert Sala, John. What's Martha Ford was watching the game? Well, turns out Martha Ford gave, uh, you know, like control power to her daughter last year. And her daughter definitely stayed up to watch Monday Night Football. Well, so if Martha's 90, her daughter is not like our age, right? She's probably 50 to 60. Uh, to me, <laughs> one, I listen, I, I was told by a person in the league he thought Robert Sala was a lock. And I think if you watch the Rams game, you go, he's kicking their ass. And as you've said, and it's so true, and there's a reason they own them, the, they own the Rams. Like, it's just every once in a while when you're here, one of the pitchers we grew up on, and it'll be like John Smoltz or Randy Johnson. And they'd be like, who owned you? And they'd be like, you know. Tony I, Gwynn. Yeah. But even if it was just a kind of a random oh, guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, like an above average. Like, you know, Ken Caminetti, who's, again, a good player, he hit 700 off me. I, I could not get him out. Yeah. And I bet John McVay and Jared Goff would be like, fuck, the Niners just. But whenever the Niners play someone else, especially this year, that Robert Sala, like last night was, I don't know any way other around it beside, it was kind of an embarrassment defensively. Not because they lost, but because of the way they lost. Guys, and it wasn't just, it'd be one thing, you know, guy Diggs had two, 20 catches, they couldn't stop him. It was other guys that, that at 13, I didn't know much about. Cole Beasley is a good player. He was doing, he looked like Wes Welker in his prime. It, it, those guys, it was, the way I described it, Harbaugh had the game back in the day against Arizona. Pat Hill lived for these games. It's why one time at the Combine, when I saw the Harbaugh's came into the Eagle Suite to see Andy, Harbaugh, or uh, yeah, the Harbaugh's were in Andy's suite. They all hugged. Pat Hill was walking by, peeks in, sees them all. The first guy to greet Pat was Jim. Like, Pat! And it's just, they because they, they think about football the same way. And they live to run power 10 straight times down someone's throat. Because in, not in theory, in reality, when you run it just down someone's throat late in the game when you have the lead, it takes the soul from them. It's a way to demoralize a team. You rarely see, like, the Chiefs, don't always demoralize the team when they're just throwing touchdowns. They're just kind of having fun. I thought the Bills last night demoralized the Niners with the pass, which is like a – it was like a soul snatching of, you know we're just going to run curls and outs, and we're going to get such easy first downs, it's going to be a pitch and catch. It's going to be a joke. And we're doing it over and over and over again. And as Greasy was saying, like, guys are just running the same little curl route, and the guy's wide open because you know what? They know this defense because this defense now, the Seattle cover three defense, let's be real. Seattle hasn't been good for a long time. Uh, Dan Quinn just got shit canned. Gus Bradley failed miserably as a head coach in Jacksonville, and he's now in with the Chargers, and their defense isn't very good. Like it is the book on the basics of the defense is kind of out, and Sala, when he has an all-star cast, can overcome it like the Seattle did back in the day. When he just has a good defense. Or last can I add something to that? Or when he plays a team, like part of this is, right, Jared Goff is not, Jared Goff and the Rams just, yeah, you have their number, and it's kind of Cancun twice a year when you play them. But they did look good the week before against that team, right? Yes. No, it works against certain teams. And when it's on, it works. Yeah. But for the most part, when you go to me now against mobile quarterbacks, and I bet if we really looked, Seattle was really good. And mobile quarterback, there just weren't as many in the league. But mobile quarterbacks, like w the evidence is in, the Niners have no chance against mobile quarterbacks. That was with, you know, S S Bosa and those guys. Like th they were get those guys gave them real trouble. Guys that could move. Now you see their defense isn't quite as good. It's still solid. They get destroyed. You know why? Because the Niners don't adjust on defense. Their mindset and Robert Sala's mindset is, we do what we do. And part of the defensive line, and I saw it with the Eagles with the wide nine, and this guy, Chris Kosorek, their defensive line coach, you know who his mentor was? Jim Washburn. You know kind of what the concept is? The wide nine, one gap up the field. It's just go up the field, get the quarterback. It's why you can get gash on quick runs, and the Bills did it a couple times early in the game where you just hand it off to the guy really quick and he just shoots up. But it's where you really get gashed with a mobile quarterback 
because the defensive ends are beelining up the field. And if you just kind of run around, the only guys to consistently chase the mobile quarterbacks for the Niners, you notice, are defensive tackles because they're kind of in there and they just, but the, the defensive ends are, you know, in Timbuktu. And, and that that's where I go like last night. You know you're playing a mobile quarterback who can have unreal games. Last night might have been the best game of his career, but it's really talented. That's where Belichick or a really good coach would be like, you know, this is what we do. But tonight, let's instead of going 15 yards up the field and chasing the quarterback like it's Jared Goff and he can't run anywhere, let's take two or three steps, stop, and just get a feel for where everyone is. But that's not what the Niners do when they consistently get warped in situations like that. Yeah, I mean, this guy was 11 of 18. Now, they they did win the game against the Patriots. He've had, he's had this game a few times. Like, I do think if I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit, is part of it is he might be one of the – I mean, he is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And these mobile quarterbacks that can throw and make decisions on the move like him and Kyler and Russ, they just – they fuck everybody's shit up, by and large. But they, right? but they didn't give themselves a chance just doing what we do. Like, they got yeah, no I chance. mean, not with the offense they have. Right, Kyle even said but, after the game, like we thought this might have to turn into the Saints game. Like teams score thirty four points on teams. Like that's that is part of the NFL in twenty twenty, right? And you just sometimes you got to score thirty eight to win, and that's what last night's game. What like, I'd we say talked we about this ahead from, of time, like Josh Allen's yeah, I, a game, but, they were not going to beat Josh Allen. No, but I'd say the Niners probably don't win that game if Jimmy and Kittle are there. Like you get thirty four scored on you, it's really hard to win that game. Like you could lose thirty four to thirty one. Yeah, I'd give them a better chance. Like clearly, I thought they. They made. Yeah, they, didn't, they didn't. They didn't punt till three minutes left in the game. I mean, it's hard to win a game. Well, the that Niners way. only punted twice. Like the Niners just had some situations where they, I thought, moved the ball at times better. Now the last touchdown, but their offense. This is the problem with this is a whole different conversation, which is about Mullins, right? Which is like, oh, but you were so close in a few spots. Like, yeah, Brian Greasy said it, right? You pay quarterbacks for red zone and third downs. Like that's, you shouldn't. That's what we talked. You shouldn't win this game with Mullins because it might have to look like that. Yeah, to me, I, the question, I, have, I have no issue with taking the L. It's just the way they took the L in the defense that had no shot. And as the game went on, I think everyone's was, watching. It was like, one of their worst performances. Do they have any other pitches? Do they going to do anything else? And it's like, no, the same thing, the same thing. And then Brian Greasy, who is a pretty like understated analyst, he's not like some hot take guy, he basically is just like, guys, they're running the same curl route every single play against that coverage. You know why? The Niners run the same coverage over and over. And Richard... Love Sherm, but he's been adamant the last decade. Like, we just do what we do in this defense. Yeah, well, it it worked when you had Earl and Cam and Michael Bennett, but you can't just do what you do when you don't have as much talent. Because you know why, guy? The majority of NFL games, the majority of the Bills, too, you're going to just be missing some players. You're just not going to be at full strength. And that's whether your team is an all-star team or just the New York Giants. So you have to kind of – you just got to have some different pitches. Like, hey – this play, we brought a nickel blitz. Just give them a different look. And I just, the Niners didn't do that. It's one thing. They the didn't do it much. Year, and when they did blitz, it did not go well. But to me, the coverages were clearly, the, the Bills knew every single coverage. Because the guys were, and you, you had a tweet with a chick jumping up and down like the middle of a golf course. It was like, guys, it, it, so it's one thing some contest. How many contested catches were there for the Bills last night? Uh... That's a good question. I don't know. I mean, you had you had the first drive, the throw to Knox in the end zone that was a contested incompletion. There were only eight incompletions for Josh Allen. He was there were definitely passer. multiple busted coverages with guys wide open. Right, they led it two. They led to touchdowns. It was just an embarrassing yeah. moment for to me. It's, I like the guy. He's an impressive guy. It was not something Sal was hoping a lot of people watched, and clearly they did because it's Monday Night Football. Yeah, and especially when you start doing the is he going to be a head coach conversation again, which fired up. You know, Sherman kind of fired it back up recently. Now, part of that was, to his credit, the defense had been the defense had been keeping him in some games, right, in, in a lot of games. The defense has been, at times, the strength of the team. But, but I think we're looking at this game specifically is, well, they got another guy that's being viewed as a future head coach, right? Brian yeah. Dable getting a lot of buzz. Like Sala, opposite head coaches. It's, that unit is your baby. Right. Like Sala, like you got to really put your stamp on it. Like Sala, like you've helped resurrect some careers. Well, you get more credit. I just The reality of football right now is when you take a quarterback who everyone viewed like, yeah, he's really talented, but God, he's a risk kind of create that guy because we know the head coach isn't doing it 
And then you just see the two schemes, and it's just like, you got, I'm throwing blows, and you got no clue where they're coming from. Like, that was a big game for Brian Dayball. I it watched was. that game for Brian Dayball going, that type stuff translates. And a lot of people tweeted at me last night, well, this same thing happened with Stefanski and Sala on the opposite when Sala kicked his ass. And, I, and here's my pushback. We know for a fact what Stefanski runs, Kyle scheme, McVay scheme, LaFleur scheme, that works. We, have, we 100% know it. We have evidence now that Salah's scheme, like what he's known for, consistently doesn't work over time unless you have a stacked roster. It does not work. It just doesn't. Like Pete Carroll is a, it's Pete Carroll's defense. Their defense has been laughable. Well, I mean, one laughable. Of other, one of Josh Allen's years. best games this year. I mean, he's had three incredible games Miami, Seattle, the Niners. So one of his other best games came against Seattle. Don't you think teams want to play these def- that defense? Because clearly the book is out on Especially it. if you don't have Nick Bosa. You're right, if you don't have Cam Chancellor, if you don't have that group. Yeah. And especially if you're a mobile the, quarterback, I, I you know the they can't catch you. The Chargers, for example, Gus Bradley, have a lot better players when they're all healthy, and they kind of get consistently. Like, they play in some shootouts. It's just, it, it is there to be had for big plays, right? It, because, you know, one thing it's not dependent on, is fast corners because they think they can zone it up. And it's just, I think you see it last night. So many teams now have just, and the Niners are a good example too, just big time speed at, at wide receiver. So it's like, oh, we just got these zone corners. And then you got the Iukes and 13 for the Bills and the Chiefs guys and all. Just the, look at the Broncos. They got Hamler and Judy. It's like, Jesus. It's like, uh, it's like race cars flying around. It's like just zone, just play your play your spot. <laughs> it's like okay, uh, I got KJ Hamler running a four two across me. I'm just and, sitting in my area, and my quarterback can just extend the play, right? And he can throw a bullet once he finds a guy that has a sliver open. Yeah, it's yeah. just I, I look look at it the other way. If if the Niners had just lost or won the game, thirteen to ten or fourteen to seven, what would we be saying about Robert Sala today? Like wow, yeah. like the momentum would only be building in the uh, Michigan legislature, right? For him to be the Lions' next coach, I my my, my thing is how I'm the Lions, and I take a big time to look back. We did just hire a defensive guy. I'm with you. I who who his technically his defense was I don't like think the was Lions make sense. I don't think they do either. Now he might be a head coach. Joe Judge got a job. He you know Joe Judge was a special teams coordinator. So if Joe Judge can interview impressively, Robert Sala can interview impressively. But, but I think part of the deal with the Judge and even Floor is like, what do you guys do like? We do whatever we have to do on That's a given true. week. That's true. That is the New England thing. Like, yep. what's your guy's scheme? Whatever they don't do well. We know Joe well, Judge we wanted to change the offensive line scheme. Was willing to fight for it. Was willing to die for it, John. Yeah. No, I know. I'm just saying, like, Detroit doesn't, to me, doesn't make any sense because they've had a defensive coach. Well, think about what Saul's two best qualities are going to be. One, he's a leader of men. And that's a big thing. That is a big thing with football, like being a leader. And two, not his defense. It's the coordinator he's going to bring with him. Oh, I'm bringing uh, Lafleur's little brother from Kyle. Okay, so that guy's really good. He's gone, right? That's his best. His arguably his second best thing he's bringing to the table. If it goes well, will not be there long, <laughs> right? Right. So it's just it, that's where to me, I just I, I still get back to uh, you can't be pigeonhole yourself like we're only going to go offense. But if all things being equal, I just think the day balls, the Arthur Smiths. Any guys we're not even talking about, Ebien and me, are going to get the benefit of the doubt when they go, I can mold the quarterback. And the guy goes, well, ideally we're going to have a 30 to $40 million quarterback. Like, I'd need that guy to be able to – like, year, if I yeah. come into the Eagles and go, I can save Carson Wentz. Not, you know, I really think Fletcher Cox underachieved this year. <laughs> I was like, can you save Carson Wentz? Can you get the best out of Jared Goff? Can you get Jimmy Garoppolo going? Can you get – what are we going to do with Matt Stafford? Like, that's the number one. Like, what are we doing with Matt Stafford? Right. What can, hey, can hey, I think Matt Ryan still has a couple good years left in him. Right. Or, hey, if I'm the Houston Texans, I can build this bad boy around Deshaun Watson. Like that, it is. Yeah, or let's Justin Herbert's on a trajectory. Let's make sure we we keep him on that trajectory. Right. Let's make sure he doesn't turn into Carson Wentz. Yeah. Because all these teams that have jobs are either going to be in the mix for a top quarterback in the draft, have a veteran quarterback on a big contract or have a. You know, potentially the Eagles have a quarterback problem. Yeah. It's all quarterback central, not like, 
what kind of schemes were you running in the back end on defense? I got news for you. I don't give a shit. We'll figure that out later. Fix my quarterback. Yep. Or find my quarterback. Yeah.